uh, First Corinthians, and then we read 13 and 13. First Corinthians 13 and 13. First Corinthians 13 and 13. The Bible says, and now abide. Faith. It's not saying in future. It's not saying 10 years from now. The Bible says, and now. Here, right now. Right in this place, abide faith, hope, and love. These three. But the greatest of these uh, is love. Tell your neighbor, the greatest of these uh, is love. For a few minutes, I'll be speaking on the knots and bolts of relationship. The knots and bolts of relationship. Eternal Father, thank you. Because the entrance of your word give light and understanding even unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come today to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer and I write the word of life upon the spirit of man. Holy Spirit, help me to properly distill your word. That I will not do an injustice even to your word. Let your word have a sweet course, O oh God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You can have your seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. Alright, so we are talking about what? Tell your neighbor the title of the message. Praise God. Okay, so what do I mean when I say not and bolt of relationship? When you hear the word not and bolt, it's a phrase. And anytime you hear that word, it talks about not the vain idea or the vague idea of how something works. It talks about the practical, detailed, practical aspect of a thing. So when someone tells you about the nut and bolt of engineering, he's telling you the detailed, practical aspect of how it works. So today we are talking about the nut and bolt, the practical, detailed, practical aspect of this subject. We're not dealing about the abstract today. We want to look at what love truly is. And we're not, we're not talking about fantasies. We're, not, we're looking at relationship. What does he mean? How does he work? We're not talking about fantasies people have, like falling in love with a black American. Like the shapes and the biceps of the man you want to marry. Like the shapes of your dream girl. Like resigning and traveling around the world at the age of 30 with a girl. Or eloping with a girl because you love her. All those fantasies of breakfast in Dubai, dinner in Paris, uh, and, and then lunch in Vegas. You know, waking up and getting into your room and seeing flowers and petals all over your room, all over your mattresses. We are not talking about a tall, dark, and handsome guy here. We're talking about the practical detail of love. I'm talking about, oh my God, when I saw him, something, a butterflies come in your belly, stars in your hair. You can't do anything again because you just fell in love, fell out of sense, and all of that. We want to talk about practical ways and practical things about love. So you see, relationship is much more than romance. I want to start by saying relationship is much more than romance. Ah. Uh, no relationship can last without romance. But I want to say to you that the essential lasting things in relationships is what I want to discuss today. And there are many essentials in a relationship, many things your relationship will need. I will know in this subject, I hope you know, I don't think you need the Holy Spirit to tell you that we're not talking about relationship between pastor and member. We're talking about a loving, romantic relationship. Praise God. There's a way you say the loving romantic. You don't say loving romantic relationship. No, some people cannot preach love like Martins. I don't know how they will be saying it. Because their voice is not even made for it. So if someone were to ask you, what are the factors necessary for a lasting romantic relationship? What will be your answers? If someone asks you, what do you need to have? If you are going to have a lasting lifelong relationship, Many things, but I've narrowed it that today to four things. And I want to speak about those four things I will be going on. Four things that your relationship will need. You know, people ask me, how can I know I should be in this relationship? I want to deal with that today. People ask me, how, how can I be sure I'm ready for a relationship? I'm going to deal with that today. You see, getting into a loving relationship is not about your bank account. It's not how much you have in your bank account. Many people think that it's when you eat one million that you get married. Allow me to say to you that that may mean that you will be sending your children to school at the age of 70. Praise God. I know the Bible says satisfy us early, oh God. But it takes a level of faith to follow God. It's not seeing things that makes you make certain decisions. Certain decisions must be made based on vision, purpose, and plan. When you have a plan and a goal, you follow hard after it. So I want to talk about those four things. And those four things, I'll just tell you. Uh, they are love, trust, respect, and understanding. Love, trust, respect, and understanding. So, let's start. The first knot and bolt of relationship is love. So, we want to read Georges chapter 16 and verse 15. 
Judges 16 and verse 15. Can we have it very quickly? You, you see, many people think when we talk about love, it's butterflies. Talk about love, it's stars and sunshine and all of those things. But you see, love is essentially an heart matter. Judges 16 and verse 15. Uh, and in Judges 16, 15, Delilah was speaking and was talking to a man by the name of Samson. And he said, then she said to him, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. Listen, many times people tell you they love you. How would you know whether this is true love? It's the state of their heart. You cannot say you love me when your heart is not with me. We can learn this from Delilah. And Allah says, you have been mocking me. You see, many of us are being mocked by the other partners. They are not interested in loving you. They are making, mocking somebody means making jest of them. Somebody can keep sending you messages and is just making jest of you. So, love means so much more than romance and feeling. It is a heart matter. And, and Delilah learned this and Delilah was accusing Samson of this. You see, when you, someone therefore tells you, I love you, I asked us last week and I told us last week, when someone says, I love you, what should, you should not blush. That's what I said last week. You should ask, what do you mean by love? Now, I want to give you five things that you must find in the life of somebody who says he loves you. Five things. What does love mean? If these five things are not in your life, you also cannot say you are in love. Praise God. Five things. Number one, safety and security. You will see here, I will not put romance and feelings. Because feelings come and feelings go. If you will marry everyone you ever have feelings for, you have ten wives. Because feelings cannot be trusted. So when we talk about love, essential core thing called love is something deeper, something more important than feelings. The first thing is safety and security. You want to feel safe and secure in your relationship. You want to be able to breathe a sigh of relief and say, you know, it's nice to be me in front of this person. I feel very relaxed. You don't put up protective armor in front of the person. When you see the person, you don't keep appearances. You are just free with the person. Now, it is not a good relationship when you are not safe and free to let the true you come out. It is not a loving relationship. When you are forming, you say, you should not see me. You should not see me like this. You should not see me like this. I have not taken my bath. You should not see me like this. When every time he appears, he's always looking prim and proper. A girl is always looking flush. He doesn't wake up that way. You understand? You must feel secure. She's at the door. He's at the door. You don't have to brush your teeth. Go out. Everybody's mouth smells at one time or another. It is the time it smells that matters. So no keeping of appearances. Number two, a relationship where both parties keep appearance is a sham. That's not a, that's not a relationship. You, the way he's always cool talking to you on the phone. Girl, he psyched himself up to talk to you that way. So you, you don't have to keep an appearance. That's how to know you are secured in a relationship. I can't dress like that. Oh, you will think I'm not fine. I have to wear something that makes my shape comes out. Listen, you are keeping an appearance. You are not safe in that relationship. Listen, being on your guide and watching the other party against the opposite sex is not what God has called you for. You are called a lover, not a soldier. Listen, hello, who are you talking to? Why are you talking to him? What's wrong with you? Now, you are judging him against the opposite sex. God has not called you to do that. You are called a lover, not a soldier. Where are you coming from? Who have you been talking to? All of these things, you are not safe. You are not secured. I know some of you are thinking you should watch over your boyfriend. That's what you think. Yeah, Yoruba says if you don't watch over him, he will go away. He will still go away. He will still go if he's supposed to go. I remember when I was dating my wife, and you know she was in Ibada, and I was in Ilori, and then I was a minister in church, and there was this girl that she came one time, for convention, I said, ah, you don't come. The woman, the lady was talking to us. You don't come. Said, you should be coming, you know. With all these guests around him, you should be coming, you know. Come and watch over him. I said, ah, why not just buy a dog and just follow him? <laughs> but she was not doing that because she was secure. But that other lady, when she graduated, she stayed here watching over his own. She didn't go. The moment the man was transferred out of Elon, she transferred herself. 
Now that is true life story. That's to tell she was not secured. Being safe and secure in a relationship is not a function of biceps. You know when we talk together, you say, he must be able to guide me. He must be able to guide me. Being safe is not a function of six packs and biceps. Shapes is not a function of shapes and financial clout. It is finding emotional stability and assurance in one another. That is what it is about. Finding stability. Finding assurance. That's how you know someone loves you. It's not all this. He calls me 10 times a day. 50 times a day. He should come from a to visit me if he loves me. All those things are not tangibilities of love. They are not practical things about love. Number two, support. You will find support. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9 to 11. The Bible says two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls down and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie together, they will keep warm. But how can we keep warm alone? That tells you of the necessity of having a mate. It's for support. It's for support. Some of you like making moves on your own. You are not interested in relationship yet. Relationship means being open so that somebody can see your weakness and know how to help you. All this macho man, egoistic thing you drive around. Every man has a time is weak. Every man needs somebody. God looked at Adam and saw that he needed help. Scripture says he found an help suitable for him, not a monkey and a dog. He found one, created woman. So buying a dog does not mean you will not be lonely. Life moves in an unending circle of support. A loving relationship is therefore meant to be a support system for both parties. Sarah is a very good example of a love, or supporting partner. She was certainly not perfect, but you look at the story of Sarah. Genesis chapter 12, 11 to 20. There was Abraham. Abraham was going to go to Egypt. And she was dating a smashing, she had a smashing wife. So beautiful. Awesome guy. Awesome woman. And she said, before they kill me because of you, please lie that you are my auntie. That you are my sister. Now that's being supportive. Even to the extent of lying to save the husband. That's been supportive. Also remember Sarah, Sarah left. Say, where are we going? Say, we don't know. God said I should go and followed. Many of you, they will paint a future for you. Say, this is vision God has given you. Say, no, it's not enough. <laughs> Say, I said, God said we are going to be going to the nations of the world. Which nation? I want to see a proof now. I want, is it vision will hit? The man you saw is hardworking. He has a vision. He's focused. But you are looking for pockets. Why will you not do G-Wagon things? You see, many people who are G-boys today were sent to G-boy things because of ladies. And I don't expect you to be like that in this church. Follow vision. If you follow money, money can go. That's why it's called currency. It can flow away. But when a vision is there, it is permanent. Yes, that does not mean you should not work hard on it. Yes, sir. Listen. Your man or your woman should be your number one supporter and encourager. He should be committed to helping your dream and making you grow. That's his primary work. That's his primary responsibility. In a relationship, there will be times you will need support. And there will be times you also will have to give support. Listen to this. Never date someone you cannot count on in difficult times. Sometimes you just need to even pretend like things are difficult. And see what they will do. Yoruba says, let's close our eyes as if we have died and see who will mourn for us. What does it mean to support? It means to encourage somebody. Number three, have a sense of belonging. In a love thing, you must have a sense of belonging. You must know that I belong to this person. I have a prime place in his life. I count in the scheme of things. It's not what he says to you. It's what he does. Is someone listening to me? It's not what he says. Is it what he does? Every one of us knows the pain of being excluded or not being wanted. It makes you very small and insignificant. But when someone says to you, you are my word, you rock my word, you make my life worth living. You are important to me. You are the reason I can go on. Without you, nothing would have worked the way it is working now. 
what they are saying essentially is that you belong to me and you have a prime place in my life. It's a sense of belonging. I want to ask you, you know, many of us are in what I call romantic tragedy or what I call tragic romance. Listen, if he doesn't want to be seen with you in public and he only speaks with you in private, then you are in a tr romantic tragedy. It will not end well. How many of us know that that popular movie, it didn't end well, they both died. You know, that trust tragic romance, Romeo and Juliet, they did, it didn't end well. Listen to this. He sees you in church, he, he, he just diss you like you are not there. Or he did that, like you. And then he keeps walking. He sees you on the road, he didn't argue. You see the girl, you are trying to talk, she says, let's chat, let's chat, let's chat. What she's saying is that, I'm not interested, I'm not really sure you belong to me. You are in a romantic tragedy. It won't end well. All of this, he broke my heart. He stole my heart. He crashed my heart. This is how it comes from. Because if you have seen it, if someone loves you, he will want to be, he will boast of you. You remember the story of Azerus, the king in Israel? The king, Azerus, the king, is not, is the king in um, Persia. He said, let the queen come out and come and dance. He was, he, he was proud of what he had. He wanted to boast of her. If someone loves you, you, you know, he will just put you on the shelf. Say, let the world see. He has never used you as a status. Never. Even on your birthday, he privately chats you and called you. And he's saying, I, I want us to take it slow. Number four. Love involves caring. We all need somebody who cares about us and nurtures us. When you nurture someone, you invite him or her to take a special place in your heart. Care is not expressed by thoughts. It is expressed through words and deeds. If you care, then show it. Care is not romance. Don't let anyone tell you ladies that, I, 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 you know I'm not romantic. That's stupid. I'm not asking you to buy flowers and petals. I'm telling you to be there for me. I'm telling you to show a deep sense of concern. Listen to me. Care. You are sick. I forgot. You know I'm busy at work. You know I'm a banker. Rubbish. He's a banker but he did not hit. Care is something everyone is capable of giving. If you cannot bring flowers, at least show concerns. Bring listening to the table. I've never given my wife flowers before. I don't even know where they sell it. If you really love someone, you will truly care for them. You give them time. You give them attention. You will listen to them. One of the basics you will know when someone really loves you is that they will care for you. Many of you are not in churches and you left some churches because you feel your pastors do not care for you. Someone I was talking to recently was saying, you know, uh, uh, you see, I said about your partner, I said, eh, she's fine. Eh, uh, okay, how many times have you seen him? Eh, I've not seen him in a while. I said, why? He said, you know, he's busy and I'm busy and everybody's busy and I'm thinking, are you, are you okay? Ask my wife now. I have left Lonely 7 p.m. before, 9 p.m. I was asking myself, Tabasi or Kusona, go if I died. Because my, they do not even, they thought, if they hear there was an accident on the road, they will never think we are there. What are you talking about? Even when we are in the world, fully committed to the devil, we travel to Epoma without anybody knowing. That's care. At the day near, at the day we have come, we have come. See, you surprised me. I said, that's my job. <laughs> Number five, acceptance. There will be acceptance. The person will accept you. Acceptance is very key in love. To love someone means to like what you see. See, you will never, and that's why some of us are not married. I'm tired. You think there's somebody you will like 100%? Stop fooling yourself. If you like somebody 100%, you will not like them 100% of the time. 
like I say, maybe when they wake up or when they are sleeping. Or when some people are eating. <laughs> you won't like them. Some people will dress like this. And you are thinking, my God, what happened? What happened, man of God? How did you combine this color together? Are you from a rainbow country? <laughs> Your job is to come in there and know the things that can be changed. Oh, so you don't like the way he cuts his hair. That's not a problem. There are barbers in town. And there are hair designers. Change his hair, barber, and see the thing come out. His hair is not black, he's not brown, he's just confused. Then buy dark and color the hair for the guy. See, let's know the things we can work on. The Yoruba has an adage. I will not speak Yoruba, so I will just tell you the literal translation. It says, he who stays with a person and does not know his character and behavior is a wicked person. One of the things love does is to accept the person as the way he is. Many of you are staying with your mothers. Your mothers are not perfect. But you can't stay with a girl. But you have accepted your mother like that. Mommy, that's mommy now. Even your brother is complaining. Say, no, no, but you know mommy now. Why are you angry? But here is a girl and you are complaining every day. Something is wrong with you. Listen. But love is something you should feel very accepted about. It should not make you a project. It should not want to change everything about you. It complains about the way you speak, about the way you talk, about the way you eat, about the kind of food you eat, about how big you are, about the kind of clothes you wear, about you, the, even the course you studied in, studied in school. It's, it's, it has made you a project. Now, don't enter that kind of relationship. There's no love there. Listen, when I found my wife, the first thing I discovered was that she does not laugh at any jokes. It was amazing to me. Uh, amazing. I mean, night of a thousand laughs. Smile, laugh, all, all those nights of a thousand. And then we, I put it in. And then I'll be laughing. And then, no, there's a way some people make you feel very stupid. <laughs> I just, <laughs> and then I hear that I'm laughing alone. There was no. And then I look to the side. And I see the person born like this. I don't complain. I don't have to complain. Now I know the things I waste my money on. Young MC was doing a show one time. He said, come with your man. Come with my wife. I said, come and waste my money. <laughs> it's not wasting money. I will be regretting that we went. He will touch me and say, should we be going? He said, because you know it's torturing. Why? Because all the things you find very funny are not funny to her at all. But come and see the odd ones. Wife will not, like Mr. Bean <laughs> When I saw it very dark, there was no need to now be saying, buy lightning cream, become white, become white. My dream girl is the white one. It's just God that told me you are the one. So come begin to become light. You see all those nonsense you people talk about? Physical appearances. In love, you accept. And then let's now talk about the second knot because of our time very quickly. I said the first one is love. And then I gave you five things you will know if somebody loves you. If you can't find sense of belonging, He's always talking about his life without you. That means you are not there. You are not in his mind. You are just a very close friend. Stop, stop assuming. My wife used to tell me, tell them to ask the guy, what are you doing with me? No assumption. He calls you every night and you are mumuing, mumuing, receiving calls. After I called my wife every night, less than two weeks, that girl, eh, say, hello? Say, say, Alpha, what do you want with me? Straightening, no need. From the blues, the question just came forth. But some of you say, hey, you will be bad, you're feeling bad, feeling bad when he's feeling your emotions. He's feeding your emotions. It will run you riot and run you out of life or town. So that you will seem you'll be very angry. It's not his fault. So ask him. Alagba. What do you want? What do you want? Very important. 
So number two is trust. Trust is, you see, we can define trust, but I can tell you how trust works better. Trust is when a friend is, is drowning in water. I say, bring your hand, and then you just reach your hand, and you, because you are sure that guy will take you off. Somebody was asked what, what trust is, and the man, is, okay, somebody was asked um, whose two guys were playing, and he said, okay, which one of these guys are your, is your son? One of them is your son. And then he said, I'll show you. And then he went there. And then he asked the first one who was on the tree, say, jump! That guy looked at him. And he did not. So he climbed, he came down by himself. And the second guy, he told the guy, jump! The guy flew. He said, that's my son. You know why? Trust. Trust. That's trust. Trust is taking a leap even when you don't know where it's getting you to. Trust is making yourself dependent upon another person for some result or outcome. It's an LD dependency. You believe in your mind. Now, first thing about trust is that you believe in your mind that that person is trustworthy. Understand that. First thing, you believe in your mind. This person I'm dating, this person that's asking me out is trustworthy. If you don't trust him, don't do it. It's not, it's not compulsory. I'm getting old, it's not there. It's not trustworthy. It's better to be single at 32 than to be crying at 48 when you cannot get out. Because you are born, your children finish, and the guy is still going out to meet other girls. And he makes sure all the children are in Chibodin's house. So you are alone. This one is what we call matured aloneness. Number two, there is an emotional response in trust. When you feel confidence in somebody you trust, you trust the person back. You respond emotionally by trusting the person. In love, in trust, again, there is a behavior that comes to place when you trust somebody. Some people find it very easy to trust. For instance, in our lives, in our home, I find it very easy to trust people. My wife does not. But I also find it very easy to lose trust in people. She finds it very difficult to lose trust in people. So there are different kind of people. Some of you here, you find it very easy to trust. Some of you, when you trust somebody, to lose that trust is very Ah, But for me, I trust... If, if you tell me, I see you coming out and you are coming out from a brutal and you are a prostitute and say, I'm a virgin, I believe you. That's what you said. I just believe you are there praying for people. That's what I believe. <laughs> I am that kind of trust maverick. I trust people. But the day I see you with a guy that I don't know or something, uh, there's nothing you can do. To get that trust back, it will take the Holy Spirit. That's to tell you, some of us are like that. Some of you, very quick to trust. Some of you, not like that. So know who you are. When two people are in a relationship, you know what they are sending to themselves? They are saying, I have confidence in you. I will be there for you when no one else is. You can depend on me for little things and big things. They are saying, you can depend on me to always tell you the truth. You can count on me at all times. If you are there for a relationship and these things are not there, they are not clear, you can't trust the person. You can't depend on the person. Then get out. Understand that there is risk in trust. The other person can let you down. But you must take a risk. Am I saying you will never be heartbroken? I can't take that to the bank. It is men. Like they say, it is the inheritance of men in Nigeria to receive no. So when somebody says, I cannot go ask what if he tells you no. It is our inheritance. Every man in his lifetime should receive at least a no. You know how it feels emotionally for counseling your children in future. <laughs> Build them to boldness. That's it. Oh. That's it. After you have received your first no, there is a level of confidence you walk in. Pata, pata, yos or no. Pata. It's a level of confidence. Can't slap me. So I deliver my message. Just hear the Lord. No, I don't say that. Some guys are so whacked. Say, God say you are my wife. What kind of nonsense trick is that? In this new generation. Don't, don't, any lady, they do any of that to you, I have my permission. Just tell you guys to go away. I beg, there are better ways of doing things. You know, the day I was, the first time I saw you, I remember the 31 Proverbs woman. You won't call it Proverbs 31. You say 31 Proverbs. Turn the thing around, turn her head around. When you walked in, I saw a woman that reminded me of the faithfulness of my mom. 
And when you I see your dedication in church and in God's house, I know this is somebody that can be a pillar in a home. And you are beautiful. The way you smile, your teeth, awesome. As I was praying and God began to deal with me. And God said, you are my wife. I was elated, I was joyful, I was happy. And I said, let me come and tell you. Have I not said, God said, you are my wife? Have I not said it? But you said it as number one, you are walking away. This is not the 18th century. Everybody wants to feel wanted. A girl will ask you, so apart from God, you will not be here. Ask my wife. I, I, I turn the head. And now put it back. It's my work. It's my job. How can you be a diligent believer if you cannot put rhymes together? The book of Solomon was there for a purpose. Listen, life is about trusting people. You sleep on the same bed as a married couple with somebody and you are not thinking the person can become mad and use you for money ritual. Listen, life is about trust. You came to the house, say, I've cooked this, your food. You didn't know whether the person poisoned you and you are eating it. Life is about trust. So don't try and do life with somebody you do not trust. Number three, the not and both of respect. Of respect. The third practical aspect of being, of being in a loving relationship is respect and honor. And it should not be neglected. Through our scripture, we are told to honor one another. Have you been honored and respected by someone before? If you find somebody who honors you, I mean, when you see the person, you will always smile. You always have this confidence. You should not feel dishonored in your relationship. You should feel honored. Basically, respect is recognizing and acknowledging the other person's worth and value. I'm not talking about submission here. I'm not talking, we're not in a marriage seminar. Are you with me? Any man that tells you to, to, to submit to him and he does not love you back, don't submit anything. Scripture says submit to us, man, not to every man. Let's quote scriptures appropriately. First, you must understand the, you know, Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3, however, each of you must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Listen, in case you do not know, what a woman wants is love. What a man wants is respect. It doesn't mean that a woman wants to be disrespected. It just means that that actually speaks more to her. That is a language she understands more than respect. If you keep greeting a woman, lie down, do everything, and you do not say those four magical words, I love you, and show it in your heart, she does not need you. And I say to my wife, I love her. There is sparkles, sparkles, sparkles. But when she says, I love you, I just look at her like, and she's like, I said, I love you. I understand she said it, but there is a boat inside of me, you know, not and boat. It's not, it's not locking. But when you say, I love you to a woman, it locks that thing up. And you must learn to say that. Some of you are so egoistic. Guys, so egoistic. Can I say, I don't love anybody. It's a lie. What you do in the corner of your mind is more than that. How do I show respect? By acceptance. You show acceptance. You give recognition. You give affirmation. You believe in them. You look for ways to build them up. That's how to show accept respect. You give appreciation. You give admiration. Listen, you are the person's cheerleader. Someone says, hello, I failed that exam. It is not, you know my wife had to tell me this. Ah, she's, guys, sometimes we are so dull and we think we know a lot. Because by nature, we are solution providers. So when a lady is telling you, you know, we are going through this, and then somebody now said, in my head, and in the head of every man, he's looking for a solution. Saying, don't you don't do it that way again. Just do this one. That's what you need to do. And then, and then she looks, after I've done that for a while, I said, I'm not asking you for answers. I just want you to listen. So, you know, you just need to learn to listen. You will get ladies more if you listen. You talk too much. That's one of your problems. 
just learn to listen. She, it doesn't need solution. They are too bright. You see, they will say everything, and after they are done, they will now give you the solution. But what cannot be that difficult and hard for them? And they now call their girlfriend, boyfriend and say, you know, this, one, this happened. This guy just came in and starts talking trash. And you say, and I now respond, I now say a teachable moment. Say, you two, you should not be responding that way. So you start fighting. Or she just give you silent treatment. What happened? What did I do? Nothing. If you meet some women, they will teach you obedience by the things you will suffer. Let me say this to you. And I'll say it to you very clearly. Silent treatment is a way to treat a guy. See, when you stalk someone, you shout back, oh God, you're stupid. When you say, it's not like that, it's not, okay. Okay. Guys by nature are cantankerous. They want to talk and you talk back. So you say, okay. Say, what else do you do? Say, it's fine. Should we do it that way? Yes. Is it fine? Yes. Are you fine? I'm okay. I love you. I love you too. So when she calls next, when he calls tomorrow, hello, how are you doing, babe? Fine. How was your day? Fine. You will call? Good. I was calling, have you eaten? Yes. He will now come back and say, hello, sorry, sorry. What happened? You are not fine. He said, no, I'm fine. He said, no, I'm, you are not. He has become a dunce like that. He will now start saying, okay, what did I do? He will now be playing. You see, a serious film will play in his mind. <laughs> what happened? And then he will come and say, is it yesterday? Hey, I'm sorry. Hey, hey. But you see all this, hey, is that the way to talk to me? He will reply. And you will continue. Number four, the knot and the bolts of understanding. The fourth essential element of a loving relationship is so often short-circuited, but it's very important, and that's understanding. Understanding only develops over time. I need to understand that. It's based on knowledge. You understand others by getting inside of them and seeing life from their perspective. Seeing life from their perspective. Listen, a true loving relationship involves a tremendous amount of communication. That's why some of you, you don't need it now. You can't even face ICT, whatever course you are doing and pass. Now you want to add relationship to it. It involves a tremendous amount of communication. Of asking, giving, sharing, listening. It will take your time. Some guys don't have money again. They don't have money. Because they are trying to do tremendous communication as students. Some people junk their exams because they are sitting with a girl, sharing and asking. And soon and very soon, the girl will fall in love. Unfortunately, not with them. If a relationship will thrive, one of the first primary responsibilities of both partners is understanding one another. Listen, that's your first job. Your first job is to understand him. Your, his first job is to understand you. Is to see life, life from your eyes. See life from your perspective. See life the way you see it. So in our house, we talk to anybody the way we like. My dad taught us that. My dad will call and say, what's up, how are you doing? That's the way my dad talks. So in my house, we talk. We do a lot of talking. We do a lot of talking. We, we have, can say, ah, why you, that thing you did is very stupid. We say all of those things and he say, ah, so I'm, a, I'm somebody who was raised, I can put, as God is crazy about me. I wear it as a shirt and I'll be walking. Some of you cannot do that. So God is crazy about me. I'm crazy. But we're talking about how the love of God is and all of that. So in my house, we just do words. We do words. So I was talking to my wife one day and I said, you know, that's a crazy thing to say. My God. 30 minutes I was explaining myself. 30 minutes. I was explaining. I said, no, that is not what I was saying. This is not what I mean. This is the, she said, you know, I was very, you know, when you marry some people, 
<laughs> it's English. I don't even speak English as much as this. But in my house, I don't even know. Yoruba has almost vanished. She just say, just say, no, that's not the way I define it. Crazy means actually in the dictionary. And she tells, and I say, no, that's the first definition. There is the second definition. So we have what we call an intellectual conversation. And you see, let me tell you this. In understanding somebody, the rule is this. Understand, number one, that the person loves you. You see, if you know that person loves you, then the person will not intentionally try to hurt you. Do you understand that? So can I be sure he will never hurt me? No. But because I understand he will never go out of his way and plan hurting me like people plan to cast a movie. I say, okay, I will hurt her. I will do it for her. Because he loves you. Because he honors you and respects you. And what's number three? I said trust. Okay, and because he trusts you, he will not do all of that to you. It will not, number three will not happen. So it's easier for you to understand one another. Why? Because the first three are there. So, but understanding actually takes time. And that's why you hear people say, don't meet a guy today and marry, her to, marry him tomorrow. Is that, you see, all of those things happens in the movie. You see, in the movie, you see babies, they are fine, just like they use powder on their faces and all of that. And they never pull in the movies. They are just fine, awesome. They just keep walking away. But in real life, you pack pool. In real life, you do pampas. In real life, you wake up in the middle of the night and not sleep. In real life, it is actually serious work. Let me say this to you. For all of you shiny high girls and shiny men, like, shiny, men, shiny men in this hall, that love, love, love is not what you see in movies. You see Linda, uh, that's not, you see all these Jennifer Naji and, 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 and all of them looking themselves in the eye, blushing and all of that. They show you package. It's called movie. They cut an edition. It's a movie. But in life, life is not movie. Life is life. That means if you die in life, you are dead forever. Is someone with me? <laughs> so, but in movie, you can die and be in another movie. Do you understand? So when we talk about love, love is not a facade. It is not acting up. It is not showing up for a date. It is not dressing up so that the guy can see me. Love is actually doing life together. Love is coming out sick. Love is knowing that some people don't eat certain kind of food. Some people don't eat fish. Some people don't eat pandediam. Some people only eat indomie. In true life, in real life, and you have to understand them. Life is saying he's wearing red. And you say, no, that's Fushia Pink. And then you start arguing. There was a battle when we were growing up. Ijebu ladies, they used to put McLean and toothpaste. They put it from down. And then so that it would be going up. And so when you press it in the middle, they fight you because they don't understand why you should do that. Perspective. It's still the same life. So somebody sees you and says, you are an engineer. Someone says, no, you are not an engineer. You are a constructor. You construct things. And then you start fighting. It's still the same thing. So you see, in true life and in real life, you need to learn to understand one another. I will tell you that having this note and board does not guarantee a good relationship. First, you must have made a good choice. Listening to God. Very key. There is no way you can turn a devil to an angel. His nature will show forth. You can dress a pig and put him in a palace. A day is going to come, flood will happen. You will meet him in the pits. Allow me to point out here that there's no risk, there's no reward without taking risk. Many of us have, you can't trust anybody again because you have been wounded, you have been, they have done, life has happened to you. But if you do not learn to be open and to trust, you will never find true love. Your bad day says, if you do not open your eyes, if you close your eyes so that the wicked can walk, you won't know when the good people even walk by. So in truth, some people also tell me there are no good guys in church. That was when I was still searching. Praise God. I found it an insult. Some guys say there are no good girls in church. I find that also an insult. Because when you go and marry somebody, when you are dancing together, he's going to sing and go away. Praise God. I don't say Yoruba, but I've given you literal attention before I give you the Yoruba. If you don't understand that, replay, and you find it there. Praise God. So you need to understand people. You need to love them. And when I say love, you see, I didn't define love as, it touched me and something went through my spinal cord. I've had a lot of people say things. Are you asking yourself, is this truly love? So, this is what the four notes are. But next week, I want to begin sharing on certain practical things. Because, you see, we have to lay a foundation. 
before we now start thinking about practical things. Next week, I want to talk about how to get your boss. If you're a lady here, how do you get that guy? And the guys need to come to church because I want to talk about the character of boss. Not, not, you see, there are some people who are not there yet. We should not lie to ourselves. They can't groom themselves. How can you want to put a woman under your house? When you don't even know, we see you. We don't know whether you are keeping bad, you are doing old school, or you, you are just scruffy. And some ladies can't even cook. I was telling somebody last week, I said, I need to begin to go to these people's houses so before they go and embarrass me. <laughs> when you are warming water for 30 minutes, is that not a problem? <laughs> How much gas would we be doing? <laughs> My time is up. I told someone to fry plantain one time. It became Dodo Ikiri. <laughs> a guy was telling me he wanted to enter a relationship. And I looked at him. He looked more like a calamity than a man. And it was not lack of money. It was a lack of purpose, vision, and certain etiquette. I don't understand how you will sleep at night as a man. And you know that you have mouth odor and you won't brush your teeth before you sleep. And you hate. Something is wrong with you. You made your hair for three months the same year. And I argue and it's smelly. And you say, I don't know why my hair smells. Why will you not smell? Under this seat in the morning. Why will you not smell? Some people are not being done by devils. They are doing themselves. Tell your neighbor we'll see next week. Because you have to be here next week. What are the characters of Ruth? What did she find? We need to talk about these things. And it's very important, very key. I finished my message. I'm just talking. I'm just chatting with you. So I'm done. But you see, these are practical things we need to learn. Many people, somebody was telling me, I'll just stop here. Somebody was telling me, he said, he said, hey, you know, I, I, I can't marry now. I, I can't marry now. I don't have money. Oh, Jesus. Do you think it's money that made people marry? No. It is having a plan, a purpose, and a vision for their life. My wife told me, say, what is your vision? Because she knew how much I had. I was very poor. Forget it. By her standard. Including standard of poor people. <laughs> By her standard. She said, I want to know what you are even telling me to join. <laughs> I said, it's an opportunity to join this thing I'm telling you. Some of us have mouth. Woe to that man. Does not have money, does not have vision, does not have a mouth to clear the vision. Bible says, write the vision, make it plain. You can't make it plain to a woman. You are not saying, you say no. Why would you not say no? The word you are sharing is like the woman we stay in of all our life. I told her, I said, it's not something I should talk about on the phone. I said, because you see, in communication, there's something about her. You must see the fire in my eyes when I talk about this vision. I walked, I traveled to Ibadan, sat her down. Babe, what are we talking about? I said, she said, well, let us see. I said, no, I don't want to eat now. Let me tell you this thing. When I was done, when I was done, she believed more in the vision than me. So if you tell her now that this is not going to say, no, there were times I forgot. She said, you remember what God said? Ah. Cheerleader. So I want to ask you, who is your number one fan? If you have a relationship, you can answer that question. If you don't have one, lift up your hands and say, God, <laughs> give me a cheerleader. <laughs> Rise on your feet. <laughs> that prayer may not sound very spiritual, but you are going to pray that prayer. Lord, give me a number one fan. Give me a cheerleader. You know what I mean. 